right? And at any point in time, you can't hear me, just let me know, but I am ready to go. Guys, gotcha. you can hear me good? Yep, we're good. All right, go ahead and hit the recording back. Hey, how y'all doing back in another episode of It Factor, man? We got somebody great today, a great young man here today. This is Deshaun Johnson. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Let the people know who you are, man. Well, you already said my name, so <laughs> and then it's on the it's on the Zoom like little name right here. So, but but yeah. I'll repeat it again as you know formality. Um, my name is Deshaun Johnson. Uh, I am a web designer and developer, more so web designer. I spend most of my focus, career focus on that end, and I've been doing this since 2011, uh, as well as also I'm a teacher. So right now I also teach English. Uh, I'm actually back in the classroom teaching uh, middle school English right now, something that I'm actually really passionate about and have great success in. Um, and we could definitely, you know, jump into that because I'm pretty sure the audience wants to know is like, well, this is a tech channel. Like, why is he back teaching English? Like, what, what's going on here? That that may be a question. So, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm more than happy to share it and everything else, too, man. So uh, I don't want to dominate. I could talk a lot. So I'm going to really be mindful. Try not to dominate over the uh, our very gracious host I, I, right I now kind of act as a moderator most of the time like let me chill real quick it's about them you know i'm just here yeah <laughs> well man like you know just feeling the vibe and everything else i was hoping this would be more conversational than just formality interview you know so um yeah, we, so yeah yeah when it's uh, when it's us man it don't never be no dull moment like none <laughs> of the interviews don't feel like a dull moment because somebody might start, start off you know asking certain questions, questions like i'm gonna ask you know say you can start now yeah, yeah, uh, man. <laughs> I was attending Grambling State University, man. What, what was that like? Well, the the here's the thing. I actually grew up in Grambling uh, since eighth grade because I'm originally from Chicago, Illinois, and my family moved to Grambling, Louisiana, back when I was about 12, 13. I guess that's the age that you are, 14, when you were um, in eighth grade. So we moved to Grambling. My grandfather, his family is actually from Grambling. So there's a lot of like history, you know, in my family and, and the attachment with Gramlin period. So I went to Gramlin Middle School, Middle Magnet School when it was that during that time. This was like 96. Then I went to Gramlin Laboratory High School. And then from there, I just went to Gramlin State University. And really, man, it was cost efficient. You know, um, when we went to the high school, it was very, uh, how should I say, if you could go somewhere else, then I mean, you, you're looked at see, as somebody that's like doing big things like, oh, he got accepted to a like school outside of the state. Like, you know, he's going to go study medicine or something like that. But I mean, I, at the end of the day, it was just really, you know, it was just cost. It was cost efficient, you know, um, be, be living in Gramlin. Like I didn't have to pay room and board. That saved a lot of money. And then um, the house that I stayed in with my my parents, you know, my brother and I, we lived in a smaller house. So me and my brother shared a room until we moved all together. And I, I really just stayed there until I graduated in 2006. And um, something that you may not know is that, let me see, I got two associates and one bachelor's right now. So I have a bachelor's in English, I have an associate's in criminal justice, and I have the associate's in web graphic design. So yeah. Ooh. Yeah. So, man, tell me a little bit about, man, you know, um, First off, we're going to start with English. So what made us go into English, man? Because I'm a writer myself. Good. You know, man, I, I, I didn't even man. know that. I'm a whole author, man. So, yeah. Nice, 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 man. Okay, cool. Um, Well, man, that, that's kindred spirits. You know, I, I actually love meeting, you know, fellow authors. I'm very passionate about the written word. But to be honest with you, man, writing, I just feel like it's a calling, just like teaching. You know, so to me, they're, they're going hand in hand. And I'm actually explaining why writing and web design goes hand in hand development. But... Um, I, I mean, since I was young, I've just been writing just constantly. I love writing stories and those sorts of things. When I actually went to school, you know, and I want to make this perfectly clear. I'd have no regrets about majoring in English at all, you know, and but I have to admit, I did fall into the trap in terms of, well, what am I going to do after uh, high school with, with my English degree that I have right now? And I'm, I'm so passionate about, you know, if you major in English, there's so many things that, sorry, so if I just flying around on my core, uh, you, you can edit that out if necessary and everything. But anyways, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, I just really had a, a, a huge passion. And now then today, man, if you're majoring in English, there's so many things that you can actually do with the degree because I had a big focus on communication style, um, just mm -hmm. constantly writing. And I, I think I seen a Jordan Peterson clip where he, he talked about writing teaches you how to think. And I, I think, you know, I do a lot of writing. I, I write down my thoughts a lot. I go back, I reevaluate what I actually just wrote. 
Uh, what was I thinking at this time? Actually putting it down? Did it need to stay in my head? Those are some really good questions that you can ask yourself. And, and, and having a good practice in writing is going to help you think a lot more. So when I majored in English, I really I, I wanted to pursue a career as a writer. You know, and a lot of people will say, well, you didn't have to get a degree in English to do that. Just just writing everything goes. I, I mean, that, that, yeah, I, I guess, you know, but I, I, the things that I've actually learned from my professors, the encouragement, the camaraderie I had, because when you're in the English curriculum, um, you're, you're, if you're a guy, psh, I was like, it was like three guys in my whole department and the rest of them were like females and everything. So it was just like this, <laughs> man, it was, it was great. I'll just leave it at right, that. Hey, like, all these women here, I got to work together. We're going to work on the project together. Yeah, it was, it was great, man. And if you're, I mean, if you have a brain and you're not, you know, like just the, the guy that's just this quiet writer and just shy, like I was very sociable. You know, I enjoyed a lot of the uh, ladies that I actually, um, that I took classes with. So that, I mean, it was, it was a pure enjoyment. And I think it was during college that I started to develop and open up more and develop my social skills. Um, being able to articulate the, the studies that we did. So I don't I don't regret, you know, majoring in English at all. I don't think what I think most English departments fell at is is really trying to teach the kids like what is the practicality of this degree once I actually leave here. You know, in the times that we're in now, there, there's a lot of practicality in terms of, you know, becoming a blogger, using your writing skills to serve other people and, and we can get into that. I don't but it looks like you was about to say something, so I'm gonna just kind of stop right there real fast. Oh, yeah. No, you fine. I was about to say that uh, even with me being a writer, like me going into computer science, it wasn't until like my, I think, junior, it was senior year, actually, man. One of my professors was like, he read one of my papers and he was like, man, why are you not like, why you ain't a writer? Like, why you didn't go into English? Like, you could have did both. Why didn't you minor? And, and I was sitting there like, I don't know, man. I <laughs> Cause I, I, don't know, I like computer science, but as time went, and even now at work, it's like, uh, as time is shifting in my mind, it's like, I love writing. I think writing is a gift that I have. Like, yeah, know, yeah, you know, man. And yeah. it goes hand in hand, like you say, with teaching. So, like, me wanting to be a college professor soon, it's like, I feel like everything just working out to be into that favor. And I'm like, thank you. For now, that, wait, you know. Is that your career, girl? Like, you really want to like be a professor, like, on a collegiate level? Man, really that's dope. That's, That's my main goal. That's nice. Like, if Jeremy is a college professor, I'm going to cry, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be like, I got a job. Wow. Man, Kendrick Spears, for real. You know what, man? I got to, I mean, it's a lot, you know, that, I, I mean, now that we're having this interview, we're just conversing. You know, that's something in the back of my mind that I think I want to do, you know, later. Because I, I want to teach students that uh, have, have the like mind to you know, want to learn the things that they're actually into, you know, and I, I think somewhere down the road, I actually may pursue trying to teach on a collegiate level. So that, that man, that really makes my heart glad that that's one of your career pursuits. Cause I'm thinking when I saw, you know, when you sent me the email and I saw that you was a computer science major, I was just thinking like, you was, you know, use the degree tech, work in technology, work for a, a tech startup or something like that. But I had no idea that you wanted to, you know, that was the, the long-term reach, man, that, that, that makes me happy. Super happy. See, I look at it as this, man. You know, and I say it, it's an open space. Uh, I like tech, right? But I just dislike the lack of, I can walk down the road like it's another brother or another sister and I can do this. And not saying I don't, that's the reason why I want to move. But as time went and me working for someone else, it don't correlate with me anymore. It's like, let me go be a professor. And at least with me working for somebody else, I can kind of be doing stuff that I want to do. And like, like just, just pit that into the future of people. Like, hey, yeah, you might have to work with somebody else for a while, but you know, find that thing that you like to do so that you won't feel so bothered in like, I gotta work this way and I gotta get this done. Yeah. And I need, and I need a 401k and I need, all those things go through your head. And you're just like, what's gonna happen if I don't do this? And it's like, it's no handbook to how you should live your life. Like, and yeah. don't let no one tell you how you should live your life. But I feel like being a professor, all the professors I had, had open life. Because they do stuff, mm -hmm. like even my brother teacher now, you can do stuff and it won't affect anything that you're doing. Like, let me teach, let me talk to the parents, let me, you know, I watch her do that and it's like, Jeremy want to be a professor, man. Like, at the end of the day, you know, hey, I want to do that because I feel like it's more free time and then give me time to just give to the, give to the future, man. That's what we really 
supposed to do on earth. Man, teaching teaching is a, a rewarding calling, you know, and I personally mm -hmm. believe that teaching is a calling, you know, um, biblically and everything else. So another thing I need to to share with you that, you know, I recently made a video on my channel in terms of, I think it was titled How God Can Open Doors for Your Career, you know, and I, I know a lot of people there, there's a lot of, you know, trying to separate tech from, you know, spirituality, spiritual beliefs and whatnot. But, uh, but it, when you're a Christian, it's really hard to separate you know, how God is actually involved in your life or your career process and try to make it seem like it's all on your core. Like everything that I'm doing is all because of God. It's that that's it. You know, just the doors being open and everything else. Um, the calling to teach, because actually beforehand, I was like, I'm not going into a classroom. I, I was actually a Walgreens manager and I worked with a guy who was like who majored in education. He said he just went into the classroom once and the kids were so bad it was like nope never again he was just stuck working at walgreens you know and i was like whoa and that that scared the living daylights out of me all again I've, all i've heard was horror stories in the classroom and kids not you know doing what they supposed to do but um when i actually went in and i you know when i had a different life you know when i actually became a christian i went into the classroom with the intentions to serve people to serve the kids and parents and everything else um then it was a thing of like, okay, man, like I'm really actually enjoying this. I started substitute teaching first before I actually did formal teaching. That really gave me the experience to actually see like, wow, this is really, this is really fun. This is rewarding, like connecting with the kids and that sort of thing, you know, and I was actually subbing, I was doing elementary school. Then I actually subbed and did middle school. High school is my cutoff because I, 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 when teens get disrespectful and I'm just like, huh, I don't... <laughs> Yeah. I have a yeah, yeah man. <laughs> so that I mean, it was just my it was just my experience, you know. And I I would rather if I'm going to um teach older people, I'd rather just skip the high school level because there's still that level of immaturity and the high school hijinks, man. And you get in a collegiate level by that time, hopefully you would have made a decision in terms of what you're seriously trying to do, especially if you're trying to pay uh, these large sums of money to attend these schools, you know. So, uh, uh, but. Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> man, exactly, exactly. I hope I didn't go off on a tangent in terms of answering your question about Gramlin and everything else. You fine, man, you fine, because you actually, man, you first person to, like, answer the question, the questions that I had lined up, and we just keeping it flowing. It's yeah. It's been a long time, I'm happy about that. So, man, like, this is the real question, though. So what made you, you know, lead that full-time gig in design, you know, to go back to teaching? So, man, it's crazy because I wasn't going to leave the company I was at. Like, let me let me actually let me give some origin story in terms of how I even got hired there, because the first thing I wasn't going to leave teaching to go, you know, do this design company. So I was in um, Katy, Texas. I was chilling with my cousin, my brother in law, not my cousin, my brother in law. And, um, you know, we, we were just visiting um, them and, and spending time with with that side of the family. And uh, I was actually, I was actually upstairs at his house playing NBA 2K19, and you know we get so competitive and everything else. Like I was starting to like, I was starting to crush him, so I was having a good day. So my wife, I'm hearing my wife downstairs, and she gets a phone call from somebody that she works with. She's a high school counselor, so she gets a phone call from a fellow counselor, and um, the lady that was on the phone was saying that her brother, who owned a sign shop here in um, here in Waco, um, said that. You know, they were looking for somebody that was like serious. And did then my wife was like, she had said that, hey, doesn't your husband do like the web design or, or computers and everything else? And she was like, Yeah, and I was just eavesdropping on the conversation. And and I did she after she got done, she brought it to me and I was like, Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll go and meet him. Let me go ahead and like talk to him, talk to the owner and see, you know, how we vibe and everything else. And I that was you know what i would do every day i would get off of work and i would just go up there to the sign shop and just kind of learn the business and what they did it was just this like two month long interview process but i think he knew that he was gonna hire me you know i showed him my youtube channel and that i'm a i'm a yeah and i'm gonna lead into that you know what i'm saying i showed him my youtube channel at the time i had my website portfolio up that's also something i want to touch on in this interview as well um but I, I was just showing him everything that, you know, I was involved in. But more so, I think he was more impressed with my sense of, like, um, business in terms of online sales and, and, and the marketing aspect and trying to get customers. And I was just letting him know that that was something that I was actually still learning how to do 
but you know because I, I i still have these like elusive passive income dreams and stuff so um and i think that that's to a certain extent that's like a lot of people's goals but you know if i never achieve getting passive income I'm, I'm fulfilled teaching being in the classroom and just doing what i'm doing now man serving people so so i ended up working for him for about a good year and i thought i was going to be there long term and where the rubber hit the road man and we had we still have a good relationship i would like to believe but um my wife she's in a phd program and she needed to she needed to do a lot more writing in the evenings and i that would mean that i would you know we talked about this this is something that we agreed on something that we prayed on too um that would be taking care of the kids a lot of the mostly the evening time so i went and told my boss i was like man so this is our situation right now um I'm a, I'm a, I, need, I'm, I need to leave at five every day. I can't stay here. I would stay at the job to like six, six thirty, help out. And it was just, we couldn't come to an agreement on that. You know, he didn't even give me the option really to, uh, it was either like, I either, you know, figure things out with my wife or I just look for another job. <laughs> That's, oh, no, man. yeah, that's, that's stuff happens though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not mad about it. I was just like, it was something I had to go back and, and pray on again. Cause I, did, I really didn't want to leave, but you know, it'll be times, man, that I'll be sitting down do the website stuff at his at his job and i'll just be sitting there like man i wish i was back in the classroom and i wasn't saying that you know because the job was bad it was just one of those things where it was a lot of the aspects of the job i mean of the classroom that i just missed you know the camaraderie with the students the, the actual teaching trying to figure out how to make abstract things understandable to students that is what you know i would just be sitting there i, I would just miss it you know it's like a long lost girlfriend or something like that i don't know but uh but in the midst of me doing the web web design stuff there you know i, I just had a, a hunger to just go back man and that's really what it comes down to while, while i'm on the subject do you want me to talk about what i actually did at the job real quick because i know that was one of the questions in terms of you know um what i actually enjoyed from the web design so i got to actually do a lot of good fun projects uh, i actually designed the logo that's on um, a carpet company building right now. And that, that's really like impressive. Like, yeah, man, that's, I, I, I man. Right here. Right here. He's gonna say, <laughs> I, I designed a logo, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, man, see that, then see working there, man, afforded the opportunities because it was a, it was a sign company and we made signs and, you know, I actually got to um, design this logo, uh, actually meet with the owner of the, the carpet company that needed the logo um you know my boss did most of the selling i just did the design work and just kind of sat back and listened to him and picked up some selling tactics from him when he was doing that and um and yeah man right right here in waco man like i, I would drive past that logo and i'm like man this is crazy man <laughs> i really i had a hand i was blessed to do this i was blessed to use to do that so that was a really cool project i um you know but my boss actually used weebly you know to build the websites to to for the sites that he was using to um sell and offer services so i was just managing the weebly websites nothing difficult at all um what else what else there were some other platforms i got to learn some e-commerce platforms because they also sold they also sold office products so they sold things like stamps um little desk signs those sorts of things rubber stamps and so the, and they made a lot of like, some good money i didn't even know you could even make that much just selling office products it, it's crazy man that, that industry so i managed um this platform called utypia and uploading products um changing prices uh contacting and, and talking to customers helping them with their website issues and stuff you know if they couldn't find something on the website i had to figure out how to actually simplify things so that was another cool project there was also another platform i got to work with called res nexus and it was a um a booking platform you know so and i worked with an owner who actually owns a um he runs a, a lake shop he owns runs the lake um lake lake waco and marina and i got to work with him on his website um i didn't really do the low the logos that he actually asked me to design he didn't really he wasn't really filling them so i don't mind sharing that like l you know but we had another great designer you know and i, I and i think when you're working you're not working on an island and that's the biggest thing when you're working in this profession because a lot of people think that web design and development is just solo but it's not, you know, you have to understand where your weaknesses and strengths are. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I had, there was a, there was a guy that was way better than me in terms of design. And that, that helped me relieve a lot of the stress that could have fell on my shoulders because he was so good at design. 
um, with like a graphic design, like Photoshop and that sort of thing that I only needed to focus then on some of the technical stuff. You know, um, I also started running the email marketing campaigns for um, my boss. So I actually, man, I, I did a lot of stuff now that we're actually talking about it. Uh, and I could probably go on a whole nother like hour, you know, bullet pointing some more things. But um, I, I, there was a lot of a lot of stuff. I, I built a cup website because they wanted to start selling cups. Um, and these were all and just using Weebly. So I don't want anybody to think that, you know, I had to use Laravel or Vue.js or build it on some framework or anything like that. You know, and that, that's not even the case at all. And a lot of people who are on the outside think they have to, like, have these big tech skills in order to, like, get these jobs. And that's not the case at all. Like, my main expertise is actually HTML, CSS with some working knowledge of JavaScript and PHP as needed. You know, and I have adjusted websites and some programming, just learning what I needed to know to, to make those things happen. But my focus is really just still HTML and CSS, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. You better drop your, you better drop them stamps, man. Hey, look, I know this. <laughs> I know this good. Yeah. Know, I ain't all in the job, but I know this. Yeah. So I feel like me being a developer as well, man, like a lot of people may think I know all these languages. And even me looking for jobs in the past, even now, you know, trying to find something or trying to look and or help a friend out. A lot of people say, hey, man, you're a developer, so you probably know all these languages. You know? And I'm like, man, I know a few things about them. Because some things people don't know is when you're a developer and me, me and a computer science major, I learned to learn. I learned Java, right? And when I learned Java, I had to learn Python for one of my internships. So in learning Java, I was already ahead because I was able to look at Python and say, oh, this is just a little bit of this. Oh, it's different. Yeah. So easy. Yep. Oh, okay, let me let me finesse. Oh, CSS like this. Oh, HTML like okay, yep. this is how you can do it. Because a lot of stuff runs together. Man. Yep. It's not as hard as it is. It's not as easy as writing now <laughs> for me. But I can say that, you know, I had I can talk about it like you can talk about what you've done. That's amazing. I can too. And that- uh man, to be a to be honest with you, that's the that's the talks I wanted to have on this show, man, because a lot of people think that. You have to be the most savvy, this son. I'm like, man, look, if you see some of the stuff I do on a weekly basis, you'd be like, that's what you do? Like, yeah. Yeah, man, do, like, man. yeah, now, now it, it don't hurt to, you know, to, to make yourself, I guess, feel powerful in terms of, like, mm-hmm. knowing those advanced languages and stuff. But a lot of the times it's not necessary. And you're working on teams. You know, if you feel like you're going to be working on the island, you must just be talking about doing freelancing. And I'm I'm not a fan of freelancing at all. I would rather build product. I would rather use the skills that I have, build products that's going to like serve somebody and move on. You know, I, I, I managing clients and that sort of, it's a headache. Uh, I would rather do consultation. I actually just did. I got paid. I don't mind saying this out. I got paid $50 for one hour, just consultation for some basic stuff. You know, and that that opened the door for me because I wasn't even considering consultation um, in terms of trying to guide and help people, you know, with because there's a lot of people out there that are trying to still do this on their own and they need Mm -hmm. just help. Like they just still need the basics of help and everything. So I I don't consultation is something I'll probably be looking into in the future, you know, but because I I still want to help people if they're just trying to save themselves like thousands of dollars hiring a web designer. If you could just spend, you know, a few, you know, 50 for a couple of hours or something, you know, you, you have to make a decision. If somebody may think that $50 an hour is a lot, but it, it's not. And I would encourage those that's listening who's thinking that they need to rethink how they see value in certain things, yeah, you know. Yeah. You know, and that's even like me with my guys. Uh, one of my guys I went to school with, so fortunate to do my website because I didn't want to do it and do my T-shirts. You know, so like t-shirts, hoodies, anything I need now. We got a partnership. And while we were talking, I said, he was like, Yeah, we can do this. I was like, bro, you my brother. We got a <laughs> partnership. Like anything you pick me on, we got you, but I'm gonna pay you now. Yeah. But I I'm and I was talking to talking to my girl about it and talking to one of my boys about it. He's like, Hey man, that's a healthy price. And I'm like, it's my boy, man. Like all this money you spend out, you're gonna get it back. Like, why not work with somebody that you know that's gonna do the work? You yep. know, you're going to have to pay for something. You would rather go out to somebody you don't know, Joe Blow, you know, that ain't going to show you none of the work they did in the past and work with them and try to spend that. You're going to spend the same amount of money or more. Yeah. So like, we're working with him. Every time he called me, hey, man, I don't know if it's like, take your time. Man. We ain't in no rush. 
You know what? Fun. You were talking about partnerships. Let me kind of segue into that for a second because that was another thing I was going to speak on in terms of portfolio. Like, I haven't had a portfolio site up in over like, it's been, it'll be almost a year. I took it down the minute that I actually got the job. I just wanted to redo it and I had to rethink about, you know, what did I, how, what is the purpose of my website going to be now? Like, I don't want it to just be a straight up portfolio site. How can I use and build my own personal site to better serve other people? And I haven't had a portfolio site up in a year, man. And I, I, man, I kid you not, man. Like, it seemed like I get even more offers and, you know, requests to do certain things for people. And I'm, and I, and even before then, when I did have a portfolio site up, I would try to redirect them to it so they could see it. It was like, no, I don't need to see it. I'm, I'm good and everything else, man. And I, you know, and I try, one of the things I want to like also spread a message about is that you don't need a portfolio site. I mean, you, you do, they say it's your golden ticket, but what, what, let me, let me not say you don't need one. All right. Let me take it back. All right. Have a portfolio site, but that shouldn't be your emphasis. Okay. Right. The emphasis should be more so on, okay, what skills do you have and how can these skills serve uh, whatever client base, whatever the customer base that you're trying to do? You know, think about how you can actually serve people. If you're good at HTML and CSS and you understand WordPress, think about how you can now use those skills to start serving other people and let your the customers start speaking on your behalf. And that way that's going to keep, you know, that's going to keep the constant stream of people constantly coming to you um because they've heard it's just word of mouth and now you're building trust and my name is still going out there you know with people i've never even met before because i got people speaking on my behalf i get friends on my facebook all the time you know tagging me and like you know people who are saying like i need a website done and my name will be tagged and i'll get an inbox message you know they they have i don't even have a portfolio site up now i'm working on it you go to it it just says like wordpress something i don't know but it's not up but i still get people just asking you know and that that's also another relevance about youtube too um youtube serves a binary purpose uh like i was telling you before we uh, made this call official uh one if you start making youtube videos where it's tutorial based you're showing your process you're using it as a documentation phase to show something you're working on and explaining how you're actually working on it, getting that practice. People who don't know you, when they see it, they're going to feel enlightened by the content and feel like, man, I, I, they, they, the customer has to make a decision. Like they either gonna like want to learn just from what you're teaching them. They're gonna be like, man, I need to hire this guy, you know, um, so he can go ahead and do this for me. And that happened uh, with one of my Vimeo OTT videos. I had a guy reach out and he was like, you know, man, I man, I, I enjoyed that like you know, video you put out and it showed me some things, but can you just help me anyway? Cause I don't want to spend a lot of time on it. I was like, sure. And I had a zoom call and when we made some things happen, I was able to answer some questions for him. So, uh, you get people coming to you with your YouTube channel, you know, and that can also be your portfolio piece as well. You know, if you want to just have a video up, just explaining how you designed the, a finished website or whatever the case may be, you can also do that as well. But uh, I would encourage people who are looking to get into the tech industry, you know, brothers especially, I mean, have a YouTube channel and start, you know, get get screencast omatic. You know, I'm using this right now to record this interview and stuff and, you know, find something, man, to, to screen record so you, and get a microphone, talk about your process, do the Dr. Emmett Brown method. That's what I call it. Back to the future. Let's get to this, man. Like start docu documenting, jumping jiggle watch, you know, get in there. Put put the content out. Show what you're you're doing. Explain to people, man, so you can um, so you can look like the expert. So you can be the expert. You know, I want to say look like so you can actually show people that you know what you're talking about. Let's just say that. Gotcha. I'm with you on that, brother. I'm with you on that, man. So, you know, what's your it factor, man? Why you do what you do? Serve people, man. Uh, serve God and serve people. That that's really it. You know, um, I don't. To be honest with you, I haven't had to look for a job. Um, probably with the exception of teaching, that's only because I had to put in a job application, you know, uh, recently, but I, every job that I've had, like people have asked me, can you work here? Um, and that comes from, I think that just comes from serving people and God just opening doors and just walking through them, you know, um, uh, focus on, on serving others, man. Like ask yourself, what skills do you have and, and use those skills to serve people? You know, the, the money, the money will come, but the currency and the value comes from those relationships that's built with people and what people remember about the work that you did for them. That's what matters most. That's, I think overall, that's my it factor, no matter if I'm writing, if I'm teaching, if I'm web designing, which I still do, by the way, I'm still doing that. I actually got somebody hit me up on LinkedIn to work with them on a project that they're doing. 
So, and it's funny, man, let me, man, so much coming up in my mind right now. Um, so if you can't tell, I'm excited. So I'm, I'm very excited mm-hmm. just talking about all of this. I see it, man. Yo, yeah. It. So, man, so on LinkedIn, man, like, uh, I didn't notice, but I had a gentleman. Uh, I don't, I, for privacy reasons, I don't even know if I can mention this now. I probably do need to drop his name or whatever for, so his, his business could come up. So, but, but for privacy reasons, I won't mention him, but I had a, I had a gentleman hit me up, um, said he, he had a LinkedIn premium membership and he said he was looking for somebody, you know, he was looking for web designers. I think he was looking for web designers, for, um, of, of eth- ethnicities, you know, minorities and stuff. And he said that I was high on the list when he did a search on LinkedIn you know, I don't post really much on LinkedIn. Anything I do have some like web design projects posted or whatnot. Um, you know, some videos that I did or whatnot, just showing what I do. And but he said I came up high on the list, and um, he reached out and we talked and we we've started vibing. And yeah, that was and now I'm working with him. You know, so that, that's that side right there. We be holding on to yeah. It's like yeah, I actually do got somebody, and that's how it's been, man. With this show, actually, man, people. Like at first, you know, to get the friends, people I went to school with, mm-hmm. certain people I can reach out to. But now, sometimes, of course, I still reach out. I'm always gonna reach out to people. But people reach out to me more now, and it's like, hey, can I be on the show? I, I'm not always, and I'm learning to let people know that it's not only just tech or business. It's like if you you have a profession and we can talk on it, you can tell me a little bit about it. You can be on the show. Like I just want to learn and get your story out there. That's what I'm here for, man. I'm so. I'm personally super grateful for it, you know, um, and I don't really get to talk too much, you know, in, in terms of, I think some of the best content comes in the form of conversation instead of doing a, you know, solo talking head video, right. you know, and, and people just listening to that. And I think people really have to be into who you are to really, you know, sort of pay attention to that content, you know, so um like right now my youtube channel is just about to crack 300 <laughs> subscribers i'm happy about that that's something i'm not even tripping on that's a victory for me you know maybe me many people may just look at the number like that's a that's an l well no it's not because one i have content out that's how you found me this is how i'm still getting customers this, this is how other people are finding me and see in tech man if you're doing something like that it doesn't you can have like the lowest amount of subscribers like the if the content is valuable if it's crack and people are like addicted to it and stuff you know they're getting some value from it that's all that matters and people get caught up on the youtube numbers and and that even if i would be endorsing youtube for a portfolio you know piece of whatnot like you shouldn't be your 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 career shouldn't be based on youtube itself it should be based on what i consider two things your skills and you serving people, man. That's it. Now, like YouTube is just a, yeah, it's just a supplement. People, especially who start a YouTube channel, they get, you know, I think they romanticize, you know, the AdSense money. I've never been dependent on that at all. I've been trying to just try to uh, monetize YouTube for um, product sales. You know, how can I funnel some of these, um, the subscribers and everything to, you know, serve them and then supplement them with, with something that's going to help extend you know, um, whatever knowledge they're trying to get. Like for Vimeo OTT, I have videos that I've done on there and that's, a lot of people aren't really talking about Vimeo over the top, but it's a rising platform if you're trying to start your own streaming service. And I had a client, um, a friend of my wife's that I actually been working with, you know, for like, for a couple of years now. I've been working with her for free, just, you know, just building her websites, um, trying to use that opportunity to build my own skills up and everything else, man. But because I've actually took on the challenge of working with a new platform that I never dealt with before and just learning it. Um, I put up video tutorials to show other people how to actually use Vimeo over the top and it's paid dividends, you know, so everything doesn't always have to be about earning money. I still got a couple of people that I work for just straight uh, pro bono just for free, you know, and the relationships start paying uh, rewards in, in and of themselves with other opportunities, you know, so um that's why i want to tell people man like don't don't make it too much about you serve you know just just help somebody out you know if you serve and it's gonna grow yeah like, it, it is and it's not about the number man and I, I learned that and i actually have had some people even tell me like hey man you know that first time i started hey man you got this many calls and i, I actually told them i said hey man i'm not, I'm not doing that for this <laughs> you know, like, whenever it does get there like i'm about to break 200 man and i said I remember saying something on my birthday a couple weeks ago. I was like, if I break 200 before the end of the year, I'm going to get a free shirt away, right? <laughs> and a lot of people was following me, whatever. And I ain't meet 200. But you think I was mad about that? No. No, no man. I'm still going to drop another. 
I got an episode coming out tonight. Yeah. Oh. So it's like, that's what it's about. It's not about, you know, how many numbers I'm going to get and I'm going to make money from it. Now, if, if that ever does become another, like you said earlier, I want to have multiple forms of income, you know. And like you said, too, this is how I know we connect as well. If it comes, it comes. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I'm not worried about it because I know I'm always going to be blessed. You know, and I, I know that this is not the only thing that I have going for myself. Right. People got to see that. That it's not the only thing that you you have going. Right. You it's, have to... For me, man. Yeah, yeah. You you really have to sit back and evaluate your life too. Like one of the uh, another thing I'll, I'll share real quick, man, is that I was so obsessed with trying to um have passive income so I can like have ownership of my time and everything else. One of the reasons I started YouTube, but it was a selfish pursuit. You know, I had to realize mm-hmm. and accept that because I was it was only making it about me. You know, and I was like, I got I got to change this mentality because I'm not I'm only trying to just help myself. And then I got you know because you have a lot of people on the internet just you know bash having a job you know like you know you should be an entrepreneur like get your own and i'm like well what 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 if the internet wasn't here i think a lot of people are gassed up and the internet has a lot of people delusional as if you know they're just an entrepreneur now because you can throw a product up and make one single sale and everything else you know what i'm saying and i think it has people really gassed up in terms of what an entrepreneur is and if the internet wasn't here then you'll be going back to those two basic things serving people, using the skills you have to, to help and support others. You know, the, the internet and everything else, man, it's just, it's, it's extra, to be honest with you. You know, so, I mean, it allows us to do stuff like this, but it's, it's still just extra. Mm-hmm. And once you realize that you'll be fine with me working with it every day, it's just like, ever since I was able to, you know, create the show, it's like, and do other things on the side. Like, now I start about to make shirts and things like that. But if even if I'm making money from shirts, it's some shirts that I'm gonna take, man, and give away for free. Like to kids, to young adults, anybody, because I wanted to be able to see the show, see the logo, like I can do that one day. And this is what I should do once I do that. You know, and if I ever were to able to get that number, I would take that money and donate it, man, because I even donate now. Yeah. Like me and my boy, one of my homies from school, we got a college fund, and I feel like that we didn't he was like, once we get it growing. We'll promote it or something like that. But for now, we're gonna keep it solid. And I like stuff like that because every time someone do something, you don't have to post or I don't have to come on here and say, "Hey, I donated to a kid today." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's not. That's not. That's, you don't have to do that. We we as people have to get away from that and just get back to I'm serving a person. Like no matter what I'm doing, like even if you're famous, even if you're just a regular person, I need still serve somebody. And they don't need to just be Christmas or Thanksgiving. It need to be at least once, twice, three times, four times a month. You know, so that yep. you're, you, it make you feel good that you're doing it. And you don't have to post or tell nobody that you're doing it. Yep. And I, I've always been that type of person. I've always been that type of person. I'm, I'm teaching my students right now. I teach eighth grade English at the moment. And um, one of the things I really try to promote to them is to, you know, that when they get out of high school, you know, they don't have to go to traditional route and find a job, but they need to find something that fulfills them. It's not about, you know, always making money, though you do need to find a good paying job to, you know, for sustainability, live in whatever lifestyle you're trying to do. But, you know, at in the end, you want to find something that brings your life meaning, you know, and um, choosing those things. Now, you, you could be realistic about it. Too. I'm not trying to, like I said, I'm not about romanticizing certain things just for the sake because it sounds good. Um, you know, when I, and, and this leads me into a question I was going to ask you, because I know that was, you know, what you sent in the email. Do I have any questions for you? And I actually do. So let me go ahead and ask it now. Um, if, well, if you're in computer science. You say that you love writing and everything else. What, you know, made you decide to do computer science in the first place if your passion right now is writing? Was it a thing that you just looked at and was like, man, you know what? I love writing, but, you know, right now it's not going to pay the bills. I'm a major in computer science because I know the the career opportunities are, are plush right now in that field. So, what was it something along those lines? What's the story behind that? You know, it's crazy, man. I, I was in. I was fortunate to uh, be one of those kids that went to this thing. I was in, in high school was in the STEM program, and it's all the way from my high school, small rural area where I'm from. And I, I played sports, but when I went to that, that program, came like my sophomore year, I believe. And that program goes to NASA in Florida, Cape Canaveral, and then go to Georgia Tech. We went to Auburn, Tuskegee, and go to those different schools. And then going to those different schools, I saw, you know, computer science, engineering program, 
you know, different things like that. And it intrigued me because it was like, I can do this stuff? Like, black people doing this? Like, oh, wait a minute. Like, I can do this. So, like, going there, like, I can have a job there, you know, more, over, over time, more story. I finally got to the point where I was like, I'm going to be an engineer. I'm going to be a computer science engineer or something. And when I got to CAU, man, I literally walked in the doors and I was sitting in the wrong thing because I, I went to CAU as a, a dual degree student. So I was going to get a computer science degree and a computer engineering degree. And uh, you had to do three years at CAU, then pick your partner school. And I actually went through the whole program, man, went through it, got a chance to go to Northeastern University. I decided to come back and just get my computer science degree. But in doing that study, I wanted to take a high road because I felt like getting a, and at the time I didn't believe I was a great writer, don't get me wrong, but I knew in my class, like I took English one, English two in college. And I realized that like, I was like good at writing, like getting A's and B's, professors, you know, saying yep. something to me, stuff like that. But like I said earlier, it's funny that my professor, one of my political, I think political science class, I had to take an elective. I wrote a paper and it was like, did I for it? He was like, hey man, I know you said you were an author, but this is good. Why didn't you minor in, you know, this or writing? And I was sitting there like, why didn't I? I was like, what if that's for me? Because I never struggled in computer science, but I feel like I fully just did it because, yeah, I got exposed to it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, it's fun. I was able to get internships. I worked at NASA, GE, uh, AT&T, and now work at GM. But to work in those different places, I got to see that the different dynamics of each company. Like, not just being a Black person there, but being a person like, oh, you can work on this project, I'm going to throw you a project. Like, or you're going to do this. And it's like, all right, cool, you know, is this really for me? And as, as I, I got, got older, older, I realized, like, you know, like you said, did I pick this degree because it made a lot of money? Or are you going to do this fast? And to be honest, nah, if I had to go back and do it again, I would have done it again. But I always knew that just because I had the degree, my passions were still other things. Like, yeah, computer science is my passion at the time, but it's not big as a passion as me. is me wanting to serve someone else, me wanting to write. I would rather do that than anything else. And me being in my MBA program actually – pulled it out more now because I actually get the time to write more now and write on different topics of man. a lot of things. Oh, that's exciting to hear. Man. In doing that, it's like, I'm actually am good at this. Like, let me go and take a back seat. Lighten your spirit up. Like, that's what I'm talking about. Right, like, right, right. getting that Goku, that Vegeta, like, that power up and everything every time you, like, put some words on the page. Like, going Super mm-hmm. Saiyan over here, man. Yeah, man. This and, and for me, that's that's what writing does for me too, man. It, it makes my spirit every time I'm able to like complete a story, uh, be able to complete an article. You know, it, it just man, it it makes me feel like this is what I'm purposed to do. You know, you're able to look down and see like this this is what I'm purposed to do. Like this is it and everything else, man. Do you have a medium? Are you writing on medium or anything like that? So if if not, I would encourage that. I should, man. You have, to, you have to give me that information, bro. I will, man. I, I have a medium. I have a medium account. I got several articles. Um, you know, I, I'll I'll shoot you the information in email, and you could, you know, uh, if you want to, you can link it down into your YouTube description. So, um, I will, man. yeah. I will because also, I'm an author, bro. Uh, got a book out now. Uh, had a book out since 2018. I brought it out while I was in undergrad. Uh, it's called Black Man. But uh, where is it at, man? Like, is it close by? You know what's crazy? I got a copy. Let me go and get one. Yeah, man, like get that copy. Like you interviewing me, but shoot, go and get that bad boy. It's also on Amazon, my guy. So you know, but uh, you know, black man right here. Nice. Yeah, you know. Ah. Uh, <laughs> but so two hundred plus copies, man. Since twenty eighteen, probably more than that, but. I just felt so good at getting that done. And I'm actually now working on two comics. Dumb the comics. I have a cousin that's an artist that's working on the artwork. So those are coming out soon. And I'm just, I like writing, man. Writing amazing. Like, change your life. Yeah, it will, man. It's, it's, it's something about having a physical book. And I actually, I have two books uh, out. One book was a personal one. It was one that I did for my wife. It was a collection of poems. Uh, I did another book too, where I wrote a, about. This is gonna sound weird. The name of it was. Um, I'm thinking of renaming it the Rainbow Tragedy. It's more Christian based, 
but the original title mm -hmm. of it is uh if god's not for me then he must be against me and the, the basic premise of that book was you know is about from a christian perspective i really wanted to explore you know well are homosexual uh, relationships really based on i was just born this way or is it more originating from feelings and because i know how i was when i was first getting married i was trying to abstain from sex and it drove me up a wall it drove me crazy like there'll be times man that was when i was like first becoming a christian too i'll look at the bible i want to throw it up against the wall like oh i can't believe like lord you having me restrict myself right now it was it was driving me mad but i took that feeling and i was like let me explore this a, a little bit more and the the premise of the book basically is i guess the 60 second elevator pitch is that it's about two guys who are you know in a you know homosexual relationship they were both in the army one gives his life to jesus christ the other one's mad about him and, and tortures him the entire book so it explores persecution because christians always have to be prepared for persecution not avoid it you have to always be prepared for it and that it's going to happen you know right. um and it, it comes at it comes at a point where you're trying to stand for and speak for jesus christ and you know even for me to make that video on my channel about how god opens up doors you know it was it was it was difficult because it was a kind of trying to fight that um you know my what my body was feeling what my flesh was feeling what my mind was feeling and um thinking about how people are going to be like well this is a technology channel why are you talking about god here and everything and you know just standing and just letting people know man like no man this is how this is how the good lord man has helped me and, and open up doors and i can't like i would feel just bad and i feel like a, a faker to make it seem like it's all me you know and it's 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 I not you, that, man. you know you on that because to even say that you know this channel wouldn't be neither one of us would be here talking if it wasn't for god yep this channel wouldn't be here yep if it wasn't for god man and i, I, I never take no back seat to that yeah man, man. yep and <laughs> you you know because i mean at the end of the day i'm not answering to like you know um to trolls you know when i die and i'm gone i i have one singular belief that i have to stand before god and account for things that I've done, you know, and I mean, right. when people, when I'm gone, people are going to still be, you know, walking around, they'll, they'll get over my death after a while, as many people do as his life, but I have to stand before, you know, um, the Lord on judgment day, man, and I got to account for things that I've done, and, and did I, you know, serve him to the fullest capacity in a way that he needed me to, man, and that, that, that thought stays in the back of my mind. You know, I don't want, I don't want to let silliness. And a lot of times I do let silliness, but I don't want to let silliness in the end, hold me back from what I feel like God has purposed me to do, you know? So if I have to like speak and, and, and allow him to um, have that credit, man, then that's what I'm going to do. And I, I have to get over that fear and getting over the fear is tough because you know, nobody wants to be persecuted and you know, thrown stones throw through at them for, you know, something that somebody may feel is petty, but I mean, that, it is what it is, man, for me. You know, that's that's just what it is. So that's that's what the book is about. And uh, I'm probably going to have even more Christian titles, but I, the, I think the focus where I'm directed to right now is, is writing in a way of, you know, where it will appeal to non-believers where they'll get it. And then Jesus Christ won't seem like such a, a Quaker or, or such a pansy you know, as, as most books do. I went to Half Price Books, man. <laughs> I went in the Christian section. <laughs> I looked at the spines and covers all the books. And I was like, what is this Quaker pilgrimage stuff that is constantly on these shelves right now, man? You got the book cover, man. And it's just like full of books where it's a woman wearing a, a little pilgrim's de decoration and some like a guy that looks like he's Amish. And the books are just riddled and just lined. I'm like, nobody is going to read this. Hey, this, is what, this is what people on the outside think that Christianity is all about. It's about this, this uh, a pansy, delicate it's stuff, man, and it's it's not, you know, like I mean, living a, a a Christian life can be dangerous if you're living it fully because if you're standing out and you're trying to, you know, help people and and talk and spread the gospel to people, then I mean, that that's that's difficult for people who are very resistant, especially during these times, man. So, um, but I, I'll leave it at that, you know, because I, I don't want I don't want to <laughs> drown out our conversation too much with that, but that's. I mean that it is what it is. I'll just I'll just say that. You fine. You fine, man. You right on point with it, man. You fine. Still like you're right from the heart and actually, man, I can't wait to get a copy of that, bro. So you can exchange books as well, man. And um that's that's pretty much the one last thing I would ask, man. So how is it, you know, being an eighth grade teacher? How has it been a teacher? 
rewarding. Um, you see how fast that, that man, there's nothing mm-hmm. like a student uh, that you've taught. And then like years later, because my first year um, truly teaching middle school was a 2014, 2015 school year. Most of those kids are out of high school. And mm-hmm. some kids that, that yeah, were behavior problems or are doing real well. It was like, man, Mr. Johnson, I loved your class. You know, uh, there's nothing like that, man. And then there's some kids, unfortunately, that were uh, pre-AP kids I taught, man, that, you know, aren't aren't doing too good at all. We're studious, but, you know, something happened and it just things didn't work out. But it's, it's rewarding because um, you take your expertise, your expertise of the content, things that you're learning in terms of how to be a teacher and trying to make it where it's engaging for a student. And and politically, I can get on my soapbox in terms of like, because I, I have people that always tell you like, well, you want to make the content fun and stuff. It has to be fun for the kids. I'm like, yeah, they, I mean, eventually they're going to have to grow out of that because information mm-hmm. that's consumed isn't always fun. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? It's, it's not, you, you have to sometimes like consume it very be dry. Real. You got to be, be real. Yeah. You know? Like my girlfriend be with she's a math teacher. Mm-hmm. She's real, man. Some of her counterparts say, you know, you have an advanced class. And she like, I mean, they might as well get it now. Yeah. That's all they gonna from on down the line, that's all they gonna get. If they really want to go to college, like they was pushing college like heavy, you know. And she was sitting there like, you know, some of these kids, I'm gonna be honest. They may not make it to college. They may go to this school, they may do that, they may go to the but at least they would know Miss Gardner taught me math. Like I learned something that's gonna go with me. Cause we ain't just gonna use a lot of these things. English, math, you need to be so studied. Any things that you're learning, you're not just gonna use them for that year. It's gonna be for the rest of your life, you know. And it's gonna come a point where you're gonna have to show somebody else that you're gonna be like, oh, this is what I learned, and you know, when I was in middle school, what if you don't know how to count your cash? Yeah, man. man. You can love money. Yep, you know, man. Or what if you can't write or read? You know, so I can come back and say, hey, man, this is son told me, son so man, and this is the reason why I think I can stay in touch with him, because he, he did this, this, and this, and, like, it changed everything. I know how to write now. Because kids, be honest with you, man, in school, say, like, middle school, I really would write on the side, but, like, when it came to writing assignments, I'm like, oh, I can do this. Yeah. It's cool, but I had the kids that would be like, Either you can't comprehend because you didn't like the book. But I just be like, hey man, finesse it. Like, write about what you like and tell the teacher, like, hey, I got kind of off track. You know, this is what happened. This is what I was thinking. So, yeah, man. Well, maybe the next, mm-hmm. man, if you will, man, I would love to come back on your show and maybe I can actually talk about, Anytime. you know, um, the, the actual trajectory of uh, of Ill, um, irrelevancy. I was about to say that wrong. Um, being illiterate, you know, because there is a huge correlation. Now, I've seen it firsthand. So I've become mm-hmm. passionate about that, especially being a you know writer myself and being passionate about English. Like kids, especially boys, man, it's not just young black boys; it's just boys. Period. Uh, they don't like to read, man, and and the you know them being illiterate. There is a huge correlation between their illiteracy and them going to prison because they're just not able to. They're, they're able to understand the simplicity of criminal activity, but when you put them in front of more advanced stuff, it makes them feel. You know, if, they, if they're illiterate, they can't understand it because they haven't developed their sense of understanding, their ability to comprehend. And what they don't understand either is that when you're able to read at an advanced level, um, it opens the doors and supports you in how you understand other subjects, you know. Um, so right now, my, my simple goal at this moment, man, is to just in, in my classes, just get people, especially the boys that I have, just to read and, and getting them to understand the, you know, the importance of it. You know, if you can uh, follow a story in text form, uh, it could be a lot easier when you're actually watching a movie and you can understand things such as plot diagram and, um, you know, rise in action and, and what is a climax? How, how can you identify the turning point at this point in time when you're watching a movie or something, you know, and those those sorts of things, you know. So, I mean, there's a high, high uh, relationship between. Um, someone's ability to read and if they're going to be a, a criminal or not. I don't, it's, it's really mind blowing to actually just see that, you know, because um, most of the guy kids that are like really low readers in my class, they, they act out the most. Um, they ended up, they end up going down a wrong path that they have no business going down, but it's all, usually it's all just because of, you know, the fact that they can't read and in addition to like some home life stuff or whatever, but man, that, that reading component is, is huge. Yeah. yeah. So like, 
Yeah, what's one thing you can leave us with, man? So we go ahead and get to the end of the show. I don't want to end, but I'm definitely going to bring you back on a couple times. Man, I, I look forward to that, man. There's just like lots to talk about and stuff. Um, I guess, man, just going back to, to you know, um, just serve people. You know, that's, you know what I'm saying? Just, just serve people. Take your skills. Ask yourself, what are you good at? Take your skills and, and use that to serve people. If you're trying to be in this profession in, in IT information technology and you want to be a web designer, because initially that's really why you brought me on in terms of my right. you know involvement with that. Um, if you're trying to be in web design, man, you know, and you're like, I don't want to go to college. And that's something we even got, got to talk about was my whole DeVry involvement. So, but that, that could be a whole nother video on its own. But uh, even if you're, if you watched a lot of YouTube videos of people telling you, well, you don't need a degree to be in web design. That may very well be true. Then you need to have some sort of plan. You know, you need to figure out how much time am I going to take to study? Um, because I have a ton of books, man. Like I have a, t I have a ton of books and maybe the next episode or whatnot, I can have show those books to you. I got books on HTML5, jQuery, Dreamweaver, um, Action Script. Yeah, yeah, see? Yeah, man. And, and see, even, even though I went to DeVry, man, I spent a lot of time just sitting up here, man, just studying code, just reading and building websites from hand, hand coding and everything else. Um, so it was just constant practice. You know, you get, you got to put in the hours, man. You got to do the work. If, if you're going to go into this field and you're not going to go to college, you got to put in the work because you're going to have more to prove than somebody who has a degree. Now you could listen to, you know, that BS about like, you don't need a, a degree. And like I said, that may very well be true, but you're going to have a lot more to prove, you know? Yeah. Yeah, man. You, 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 even, even if you have a degree, you still have a lot to prove you have to show what you can do but the easiest way around that is to just you know find some people who need your skills because they're out there they need your skills and talent and um that's going to communicate for you um the best you know what i'm saying if you if you're not if you, even if you don't have a portfolio and you're trying to even, even like you know build the skills and even make some money on the side start serving people build those skills up come to a point where you can feel confident and say okay man i'm i'm good i, I want to do something with somebody you know like learn wordpress and for somebody in trying to get into web design i would advise this learn html css and wordpress you know you can take your html css start customizing some themes on wordpress that people have already built you don't have to build any themes from scratch because they're built on a php system from scratch um, and just start doing that and customizing themes and learning that, man. And, and you can jump into this like easily and effective. And then from there, you start serving people. You start doing some projects for them for free, build those relationships, see what they need, start learning those sales skills. I mean, and the sky's the limit is after that, you know, if you're not, if you're trying to go to non-college route, that would be the biggest thing I would leave, uh, people with, with a tangible example. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, brother, man, for the episode, man. Have a great rest of your weekend, man. And we will be talking soon. Bro. Sounds good. Wait, wait, wait. Let me, uh, let me, can I, you mind if I tag yeah, my, yeah, drop, drop your, uh, shout, shout outs, man. I forgot that one was down the bottom. Yeah, yeah, shout, shout out, man. Anything YouTube page? Okay, okay, cool, cool. Real quick, my YouTube channel is DLJ Work. So, really, it stands for like Deshaun Lanier Johnson for the first three letters of my name. And then the works means portfolio. And that I'll just do the work for you. Then I, it just everything that I do just works. That's it was a play on. It was supposed to be like a, a double entendre, yeah, double job, entendre. But yeah, yeah, you're probably head. doing too much. Yeah. <laughs> nah, 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 you're, you're a big dog, dog. man. Like DLJ works. Yep. Cause when I saw the name, I was like, he just missed the design out here. He out here. he doing it all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, find me on YouTube, man. I'm I'm big on YouTube. You can find me on Facebook and stuff, but I, I don't care too much. I'm really huge on YouTube, man. I, I probably have a YouTube addiction, just constantly watching videos and mm -hmm. stuff, man, and consuming information. But uh, you can find me on DLJ Works and connect with me there. Uh, leave me a comment on one of my videos. Um, and yeah, man, we'll, we'll just go from there. So. Okay. All right, All right then, brother, man. Take it easy. All right. Have a good weekend. Appreciate you, man. Looking forward to the next All conversation. All right. Take it easy. All right. You too now.